friends. Welcome to a very special episode of Total Power Presents Power Playthroughs Podcast with Total Power. I'm your host, Total Power. This is the podcast where I play games in a powerful way. And uh, this is the start of my uh, Game of the Year 2022 saga. Um, I'm doing things a little bit different. So in 2021, I decided to do a bracket uh, for my Game of the Year, which I so far have gotten through four matchups on, and there's a total of 69 games on that bracket. 68 games, something like that. Um, so as it stands when I'm recording this, I've done a very bad job of getting my game of the year for 2021 figured out. Uh, the year before that, I had my friend Evan help me figure out uh, what I felt about the games objectively. Um, this time we're going to do a very subjective experience for game of the year 2022. What I'm going to do is I am going to do a check-in monthly where I record a, a brief a mini-sode like this one where I'm going to uh, kind of review the games that I played in that month, uh, the games I beat, excuse me, and then I'm going to uh, rank them. Uh, so for January, I'm going to rank all nine games that I beat in January, and then uh, for the next episode, I'm going to add the games that I will beat in February to those I ranked in January. Um, I'm going to put this up on uh, Patreon now, so patrons will be able to kind of keep stock through the year as I go, and then uh, at the end of the year, I'll put all of these mini-sodes together into one a massive sode uh, available for all podcast listeners. Um, so that's uh, that's the plan. Um, I'm pulling up my list here of the 2022 Finnish games that I've beaten so far. Like I said, I've beaten, I believe, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to keep track of this. Right now I have uh, a spreadsheet with all the games I've finished, but it's kind of hard to shuffle things around in the spreadsheet. So I'm using Notion, which gives me cards. I can shuffle them around really easily. Unfortunately, I they're not numbered. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so the first game I beat was Astro's Playroom. I beat this on January 2nd. This was uh, on the PlayStation 5. Of course, it's a packing game on the PlayStation 5. It's it's a short but absolutely wonderful 3D platformer. Um, it, it has a ton of charisma in the, the Astro character. So basically, you play a little robot guy, and you're inside a PlayStation, and the whole game is like an exploration of PlayStation history through these four stages. Um, and, and there's these little robot guys just everywhere that you go who are um, reenacting famous moments from PlayStation games. So they'll be like a little, I don't know, like a little robot with a big sword stabbing another little robot with a flower or um, like a, a little robot um, climbing uh, up a plane that's crashed on the side of the mountain. Just all these little references to PlayStation. But the gameplay is just wonderful. The very first section I played, basically each, each of the four levels has uh, three segments and then a boss, I believe. And the, the first segment and the third segment are just kind of traditional platforming, typically. And then the second segment is like a um, a, uh, a vehicle segment, almost. The first one, you play a, you, you get a spring suit, and you hold down the trigger to, like, coil your spring and tilt the controller to aim where you want to go and then let go. And the PlayStation 5 has the, like, super cool vibration features where it, and, and trigger features. It literally felt like you were pushing down a spring. It was really cool, which... I guess pulling a trigger on a controller is always pushing down spring. But anyway, it was great. And it like I, I literally like had tears in my eyes at like, yes, this is the joy of video gaming. I'm gonna need a timer on these, I think, because that was way too long talking about Astro's Playroom. Um Inscription is the next game I finished. Inscription is a, a wholly not pleasant game to play. It's terrible and weird, and I won't get so far into spoilers here. Um I imagine by the time that you're listening to this, you probably know a decent about about inscription, and if you don't I'm going to say you should play Inscription. It starts as a weird, creepy deck builder where you wake up in a cabin and you're facing off against a figure in shadows playing this weird deck building game where you, you draw squirrel cards and you have to sacrifice the squirrel cards to play stronger cards. And then it gets meta and weird from there. It's kind of got puzzle box elements. It's kind of got escape room elements. It's got a very interesting narrative. Um, I, I really enjoyed Inscription. Um... But did I enjoy it more than Astro's Playroom? Uh, I'm I'm going to say right now, I think I liked Astro's Playroom a little bit more. So we'll put inscription underneath that. Um, then we've got Hitman. Hitman uh, definitely goes into my third spot. It is a great game, uh, but it's not as good as Inscription. I beat Hitman on January 4th. Uh, this is the first Hitman game. I actually played a decent amount of it back on the PlayStation 4. I played through like three or four levels and then uh, picked it up again when I got the PlayStation 5. Um, and really loved it. Uh, so much so that I went back and started playing the first level over again and just doing it over and over again trying to unlock stuff. I have ventured briefly into Hitman 2 at this point. Uh, and think I'm going to keep playing Hitman 2. Wow, there are some really cool, like, 
giant helicopter planes flying overhead right now. They're like, they're like, they've got like two giant helicopter rotors out to the side. I don't know what kind of planes those are. Or helicopter? I don't know if those are technically helicopters or planes. Very cool though. I wonder if that was what was flying overhead yesterday that was so loud. Wow. Um, Hitman. This is a good video game. Uh, Headland was the next one. Um, you know what? Headland is going to go at the bottom of the list here. Headland is kind of a top-down zelda light game. It's, it's, it's very kid-friendly. It's very much a combat-focused game. There's not much in the way of puzzle solving. There's, there's a little bit of having to explore like a small environment to, to find some keys and stuff. Um, but it was just a very pleasant and cool uh, top-down 2D combat game um, that then at the end had a, a kind of remarkable twist on the story that, that like made me choke up and made me like wistful for the days of my youth and just playing in imagination and, and a lot of really kind of sweet things uh tori 2 tori uh tori 2 is the sequel to tori 3d a uh 3d platformer adventure where you play as a little bird guy and you run around and collect coins and get to the end of the level uh very playstation 1 graphics it is a short game but it's only 99 cents on the switch i like tori 2 a lot i'm gonna put it above headland uh, so it goes into my number four slot. Then we've got Unsighted. Um, Unsighted is uh, also a top-down uh, Zelda game, Zelda-style game, but very sci-fi. You play as, like, sentient robots after the uh, robot apocalypse who are just trying to survive while humanity is sucking their life force away. It's great. Really, really good combat. It's kind of brutal at first. You really have to use the parry effectively in order to do well in Unsighted. But it has some of my favorite characters I've ever seen in a Zelda-type game. Um, the the third dungeon, I believe it is, is very hookshot-focused. And it is possibly my favorite 2D Zelda dungeon. Unsighted is fantastic. I'm, I'm going to put it at the top of the list. We're putting it at the top of the list. Uh, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. So this is the first DLC for Shovel Knight, which I started way, way, way long ago when I got my Switch. And uh, after I beat Unsighted on January 14th, uh, I started up Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows because I was looking for another retro-looking game. Uh, and turns out I was only like two levels away from finishing it. So I finished it off. Um, I, I didn't like... So in, in Plague of Shadows, you play as Plague Knight, who uh, throws bombs is his thing. I do not like that mechanic nearly as much as I like just the pure Shovel Knight mechanic. Um, and I'm a little worried because I think the next Shovel Knight expansion is Spectre of Torment, um, which uh, I, I, I've played a little tiny bit of playing the Spectre Knight, and I think I dislike his mechanics even worse. Uh, I'm going to put Shovel Knight under Tori 2 and above Headland. Uh, then there is Trash Quest. Trash Quest is a teeny tiny Metroidvania. It's like a, a one or two days to finish type game. Um, but it's fun, and it's really cute. You play as a little raccoon exploring a spaceship. Uh, I'm going to put it right under Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. And above Headland. And then the final one is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Uh, I played the Game Boy Advance version of this along with the Sacred Realms podcast. Um, I've played the Game Boy Advance version of this before. I've beaten it once before a few years ago. Um, I definitely liked it better this time. I enjoyed it a lot more. But I think what I'm finding is that, I don't know, I just, I like Link's Awakening a lot. And the other 2D Zelda games, you know, Minish, Minish, Minish Cap I liked fine. And The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the past I liked fine but I didn't love them um, which is interesting because Unsighted I definitely loved um, I'm going to put it uh, on my list right now I've got Unsighted Astro's Playroom Inscription Hitman it's definitely under Hitman Tori 2 then Shovel Knight um, I'm going to put it uh, right above Shovel Knight um, because those both kind of live together as games where I'm like, I like this, but not as much as another version of this. So uh, for um, January, my ranking uh, so far for Game of the Year 2022, uh, number one is Unsighted, followed by Astro's Playroom, Inscription, Hitman, Tori 2, The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, Trash Quest, and Headland. I'll see you at the end of February. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to February. Uh, hey, it's it's my uh, whoop. That was a can of soda opening. Uh, it's Troidal's rolled credits of 2022 game of the year 2022 conversation, uh, February edition. And uh, this month I completed one, two, three, four, five games that we'll be adding onto onto the big list here. Weirdly. All of them games I played on my Switch, although one of them 
was an NES game that I played on the Switch, which uh, is the first one on the list, actually, is Castlevania, completed on February 13th. Uh, this is the original first Castlevania game, which I only beat because of save states, and even with save states, it was incredibly difficult. Really fun uh, sequences, but each sequence within a level was really hard, and then when you add those all up into one level, it's really, really hard, and then when you add that all up into one gameplay... It's just impossible. And then the final boss, I don't know how anybody has ever beaten this game without cheating. Because the final boss is just insanely difficult. It's absolutely atrocious. Um, right now, just as a reminder, our, our ranking of all the games I've beat in 2022 is Unsighted, followed by Astro's Playroom, Inscription, Hitman, Tori 2, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows, Trash Quest, and Headland. I'm going to put Castlevania in near the bottom, actually. I'm going to put it right above Headland. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't dislike Castlevania. I actually liked it a lot, but I only liked it because I was playing it with those cheat codes. Uh, the next completed game was Ocean's Heart, which I completed on the 14th, on Valentine's Day. Ocean's Heart is very similar to Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. It is a top-down adventure game where you travel around the world, uh, going through dungeons and stuff. I really like that it had dungeons incorporated into the overworld. Like, you kind of just walked into them, and now you're in a dungeon area now, as opposed to it feeling like a like kind of totally separate thing like it usually does in a Zelda game. Um, the combat was pretty good in it. I did feel like the items were mostly used for puzzle solving, and not really for combat. Like, there wasn't a lot of utility to the items. Um, but I really like the art style of it. It had pretty cute dialogue. Uh, I, I like this game a lot. And, you know, I feel like it has to go near A Link to the Past. The question is, do I put it above or below? I think I'm going to put it just below A Link to the Past and just above Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. After that, I played through, or I finished playing through Webbed, which is a 2D side-scrolling platforming game where you play as a little spider, and you're in a big tree full of bugs, and you have to work with the bugs in your community to save your boyfriend spider who's been taken by a big nasty crow. Uh, this is very much a physics game. It's all about like using the spider's webs to swing around, and you make webs to move objects and things. It was really fun, but I felt like the first uh, kind of dungeon, the first area that I went to, was way more interesting than the following areas. So it does get like a little bit of a ding for um, pacing issues, um, but overall, I did like it. Um, I'm gonna say I, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit, really. Um, I'm going to put it below Tori 2. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to put it just above Tori 2 because it is another platformer. It's short, but I, I think I like the creativity in how you get around in web more than Tori 2. No, I'm going to put it just below Tori 2 because I think it executes not quite as well. Um, followed by the next game was Gem Wizard's Tactics. This is a very weird one because Gem Wizard's Tactics... Um, has a story mode, which is what I beat here and rolled credits on, but it's not really a story-based game. Like, the intention is that you're just going to keep playing kind of runs of randomly generated uh, playthroughs of a few levels in this tactics game, but it's not it's not a roguelike. You're like, you're not carrying on stuff, and there's not... I don't know. It's weird. I liked the campaign that I played a lot, actually. I thought the writing was really good, and the gameplay is awesome, but then after the short campaign, and I mean short, like real short... That's all there is, other than just these kind of randomly generated tactics battles. And they're, they're good. I really like the tactics gameplay, but I have not found the motivation to keep up with it very much since then. Um, so I'm going to put it in um, probably low. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in um, just below Castlevania. All right. Um, finally, we have Infernax. Uh, Infernax is... Well, actually, the, the reason I played Castlevania was because I was excited for Infernax. It is a kind of a 2D Metroidvania. I, no, not kind of. It is a Metroidvania, except for it has Zelda dungeons within the metroidvania -ness. So there's a small overworld that you're exploring, and then you go into kind of bespoke uh, isolated dungeon areas. Uh, fight a bunch of monsters there, get a new ability, get a gem, and then move on to the next one. Um, it's really bloody and gory, and it's really fun. It's very tongue-in-cheek. Um, and it's very much a throwback to, uh, like I said, to Castlevania, to Legend of Zelda 2 Link's Awakening, or, I'm sorry, Legend of Zelda 2 uh, Link's Adventure, um, except good. It's really good, and it's really fun. Uh, it's fast-paced, so it takes about four or five hours to play through it. 
Um, and then there's there's hidden game modes. There's like you can put in the Konami code and you play with the machine gun, or you can put in a, a specific name on the character select screen, and then you're a wizard. Uh, so that's kind of cool because each of those plays differently. And there's a morality system, so there's different endings you can get. I really liked Infernax a lot. It's definitely one uh, I'm looking at playing again. Um, in terms of the 2D side scroller that we played this month, uh, Webbed. Comparing it to that, this is above Webbed for me. Um, I'm gonna put it in. Uh, let's see above that. Uh, let's go from the top of the list. Unsighted, not. Nah, doesn't hit unsighted. Astrum Slayer, probably not. Inscription, it doesn't quite hit there. But next is Hitman, and I think I'm going to put Infernax above Hitman. Um, so that is our February games. Uh, again, the list now is starting at the top, and the number one spot is still unsighted, followed by Astro's Playroom, Inscription, Infernax, Hitman, Tori 2, Webbed, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Ocean's Heart, Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows, Trash Quest, Castlevania, Gem Wizards Tactics, and Headland. I'll see you next month. Hello, friends. It's me, Troy, Turtle Power, and this is the Patreon, where I told you, friends, I said, ah, oh, friends, I'm going to tell you all the games. Every month, I'm going to record a Game of the Year episode where I rank the games I've beaten, and it is uh, currently June 3rd, and I think the last one of these I recorded was in February. And boy, in February, I did good. Uh, January and February, I beat a lot of games. Um, <clears throat> there are 14 games on the list so far. Uh, since February, I've finished four in March and April and May total. There are none in May. Anyway, uh, so the first one on the list is, is uh, from March 7th, Aztec the Forgotten Gods. Um, this game was pretty cool. Uh, thinking back on it now, it, it's kind of a, a third-person action game with an open world that's very bland, but uh, some pretty cool boss fights. But the camera was a little janky. Like, it was a lot of cool ideas that, that ultimately didn't really come out to a lot. Um, so I think I, it, it, it's probably near the bottom of the list. Um, definitely below Link to the Past. We've got Ocean's Heart, Shovel Knight, Trash Quest, The First Castlevania, Gem Tactics, and Headland. That's the bottom of the list. Um, I'm going to put it just under Trash Quest, I think, and just above the original Castlevania. Um, cause I definitely didn't like it better than Plague of Shadows. And, and, and my memory is that I like Trash Quest quite a bit. So that's, that's where that one's going to sit. The next one, uh, was Grapple Dog, which I beat on March 12th. This is an excellent, uh, kind of Game Boy Advance looking, um, 2D platformer. Um, I'm looking at the list and I've got Tori 2 on here, uh, which is also a throwback platform, obviously a different era. Um, but I think it probably falls somewhere in that area. That'd be above Link to the Past, above Webbed. I, I liked it a bit better than Tori 2, and then right above that is Hitman, and, and yeah, I'm going to say it falls below Hitman. And then there's Star Fox. Uh, Star Fox, the original Star Fox in the Super Nintendo. I'm playing for the uh, the Super Switch Club. Uh, this was when I first beat it, which was the easy mode, and then since then I've beat the medium mode. Um, this game's terrible. Uh, it's nearly unplayable. Um, Headland is at the bottom of the list right now. Gem Wizards Tactics is right above that. <sighs> Star Fox... Nope, Star Fox is going to the bottom of the list. Bottom of the list. It was nearly unplayable. It made me sick, and it's too hard. Uh, then, after that, is Dark Souls, which I beat on April 27th. Um, Y'all, I love Dark Souls. I've tried to play uh, Dark Souls a few times and Bloodborne a few times and never clicked with them, and holy smokes, I got so obsessed with Dark Souls. I played it uh, along with Lokathor and some other people in the Discord kind of talking about it as I played it, and that social aspect really made it enjoyable for me, so much so that like I struggled to play other games, and as soon as I beat it, I started up Bloodborne, and I don't like Bloodborne nearly as much, but right at the end of it, I think I have one boss left in Bloodborne. Uh, and even though I don't like it as much, it's still, it's totally captivating to me. So Dark Souls has to go near the top of the list. Does it go above Astro's Playroom? It does. Does it go above Incited? It does. Dark Souls is taking the top of the list. Uh, so we now have 18 games uh, completed in 2022 uh, with Dark Souls at the top of the list, followed by Unsighted, Astro's Playroom, Inscription, Infernax, Hitman, Grapple Dog, Tori 2, Webbed, The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Ocean's Heart, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, Trash Quest, Aztec the Forgotten Gods, Castlevania, Gem Wizards Tactics, Headland, and Star Fox. Uh, until next month... Uh, hopefully I remember to record next month. Oh, hello, friends.
friends, welcome. It's a uh, game of the year watch, June twenty twenty two. Yeah, I, I beat I beat a few games in June. Uh, I beat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in June. I was just burning through them. Uh, the first one I beat was Bloodborne, um, which I played immediately after Dark Souls and did not like nearly as much as Dark Souls. Um, I didn't like the. Uh, the environment, the aesthetic as much. Like I, it was a cool aesthetic, but I don't know. It, it wore on me. It felt, it felt very samey. Whereas dark souls, I feel like had more interesting variety in its environments. Um, the combat was fine. It was different, but it was fine. I, I didn't, didn't hate the combat, but it just, it, it didn't click with me. I didn't like that. You had to travel back to the hunter's realm or whatever to level up. I didn't like that. You had fast travel unlocked from the beginning because that made it feel like, um, like the world, the interconnectedness of the world was less important because you could just jump wherever you wanted to. Whereas in Dark Souls, it was really, there was a lot of learning pathways through the world and stuff. So uh, as far as ranking goes, it's definitely not as good as Dark Souls. Under Dark Souls is Unsighted, then Astro's Playroom, then Inscription, then Infernax, then Hitman, then Grapple Dog. I'm, I think I'm going to put this right above Grapple Dog, right under Hitman. I think that's where uh, where Bloodborne's going to go for me. Still, still a fun game. Still a game I enjoyed playing, but um, but not my favorite. Next is Mighty Gunvolt Burst, which is a uh, Mega Man style game, uh, very NES Mega Man styled. I've had this like, I, I think this was one of the first games I bought on my Switch, and I finally sat down and played through it, and it was fine. I don't love Mega Man style games, and I didn't love Mighty Gunvolt Burst, but. It was nice to check it off. Um, it had cool environments, it had cool boss fights. It has this weird functionality where you can um, build a custom weapon, and it feels like that I, I was always able to build a weapon that was like wildly overpowered. So that functionality kind of made the game less interesting for me. It's going to go near the bottom of the list. Um, let's see, we stopped at Grapple Dog last time, so under that we've got Tori 2, Web, Link to the Past, Ocean's Heart, Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows, probably somewhere around there. Trash Quest is right below that. Um, I would put this right below Trash Quest and right above Aztec, the Forgotten Gods. Next is Tunic. Tunic is wonderful. It's a Zelda Dark Souls Fez mix uh, kind of looks like a Zelda game, plays like a Dark Souls game, and is full of puzzles like Fez. Um, I, I liked this game. I did f- get stuck. I started right when the game came out, and I got stuck on a boss fight that was just way too hard. Uh, so when I went back to it, I decided to enable the accessibility options that basically gave me infinite health, uh, and just, just play it for the kind of experience of playing it and solving the puzzles and stuff. Um, it was fun. I did get stuck on some puzzles near the end enough that I had to look up a few things, um, I got the bad ending first, so then I had to go back and get the good ending. Um, I liked Tunic. I didn't love it. I'm going to put it, um, I'm going to put it right above Bloodborne. No, I'm going to put it right below Bloodborne. I like Bloodborne a little bit more, but then it's Grapple Dog. I'm going to put it right under Grapple Dog. Yeah, right under Grapple Dog, right above Tori 2. Right after that, we have The Hand of Merlin. Uh, this is a rogue light tactical game. Um, that uh, I really quite enjoyed. Um, it, 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 it's much more about the story than it is the tactics. The tactical gameplay is good, but uh, as you progress through uh, the campaign, a lot of the times you're just interacting with story elements and making kind of uh, choices on how to interact with the story rather than uh, engaging in battles. Um, and I like that. The stories were really cool. There was a, a, a time when I met a king who was just profusely bleeding from wounds all over his body while his kingdom was like beautiful and intact. And he explained that he had made a deal with a god to take on the wounds of his kingdom on his body instead of the kingdom itself suffering. And I was like, geez, that's pretty dark and pretty cool. Um, I only beat it on the easy mode, um, which made it very easy, almost too easy. I've played it a little more since then, and I am liking it. It's one of those games where I'm not sure, like, how many times I'm going to have to beat it to really beat it. Um, But I liked what I played of it, and I'm definitely looking to play more of it. And it's uh, it's on Switch, and it does uh, okay, between an okay and a good job of translating uh, tactics controls to Switch, which I know can be a struggle. Um, It's definitely under Inscription and Infernax. Um, let's see. After that is Hitman, then then Bloodborne. I like this less than Bloodborne. Did I? It's definitely in that range. 
Well, I definitely liked it less than Tunic. So we're going to drop it right below Tunic, right above Tori 2. No, we're going to put it below Tori 2. After that is webbed. Did I like this more than A Link to the Past? I don't think so. We're going to drop it between A Link to the Past and Ocean's Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is great. This was my first time playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, and I liked it a lot. Um, I've been playing this game for a while. It's taken me a long time to beat it. Um, I uh, unfortunately found out about the inverted castle thing right before I played it. Oops, sorry for the spoilers. Uh, but hey, uh, it's good, even if you know that's coming. And then uh, in the second half of the game, I got a little flustered. It felt like it was a little hard, a little uh, unforgiving. So I did get a little bit stuck. I ended up looking up where to go and getting some guidance, and that helped. And I finished it, and I'm happy to have finished it. Uh, the nearest point of comparison I want to connect to right away is Infernax. I think I like this less than Infernax. Below that is Hitman and then Bloodborne. I'm going to put this between Infernax and Hitman. Yeah. Uh, next, we've got Blossom Tales, a Zelda-like. Uh, very, very cute game. Very, very short game where you play as a female knight named Zelda in a story that a grandpa is telling to his children. There's a few cute places where that interacts with the game, where, like, the kids argue about what the villain was and you get to choose which one. Um, it was fun. It was short. Uh, the last uh, the last dungeon was too long for my tastes, and uh, it, it wore out its welcome a little bit. Um, I'm going to put it below Ocean's Heart, right above Plague Knight, uh... Uh, play, or Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, I think. Uh, and then finally, the last one on the list is Metal Tales Overkill. I can tell you right away, this is going near the bottom of the list. Um, I, I wrote a review about this. It is a twin stick shooter with metal theming, but the it's just not a great twin stick shooter. The metal theming lets it down a little bit. It's going to go down near the bottom of the list. At the bottom, we've got Castlevania, then Gem Wizard's Tactics, Headland, and Star Fox. I'm going to put this right above Gem Wizard's Tactics, right under Castlevania. I didn't hate it. It just... It wasn't a great twin stick shooter and it didn't do a great job of applying the metal aesthetic. And so overall, it just let me down a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's our new list. Uh, that's June. I'll see you at the end of July. I love you. Goodbye. Hi, friends. It's August. And Addie and I are sitting in the car. Say hi, Addie. Hi. Good job. Uh, I, uh, I finished three games in July that we need to add to our big list here. Um, it's a slow, a slow month in July. I finished Hollow Knight, uh, Lumberjack, and Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. So, uh, these were all at the end of the month, which is funny. Uh, so Hollow Knight, I finished on July 22nd. Hollow Knight's an interesting game because I got it pretty early on after it released on the Switch, and then I got stuck uh, about halfway through. I'm, I'm not going to give big spoilers, but there's a there's a boss fight called the Mantis Lords, uh, and I got stuck in that boss fight. Just wrecked me. Um, a big part of why it wrecked me is because, like Dark Souls, you respawn at the last place you rested in the Hollow Knight. It's for anyone who doesn't know. If you don't know Hollow Knight, it's a 2D side scrolly action game, kind of Castlevania ish. Uh, but you play as a little bug, exploring a little bug land. Uh, and you rest on benches. And, uh, the man, I had to run so far between the bench and the boss fight. So by the time I got to the boss fight, not only had I often used up some of my healing and stuff, I wasn't, like, at full health, uh, but I was just frustrated, and then the boss fight would just ruin me. Um, so after, after getting back into the Dark Souls stuff and then playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night, I was like, I'm finally going to pick up Hollow Knight again. And I played about the first two hours of it, started over, new save file. And then I was like, all right, I think I'm back in the swing of things. Let's go load up that save file and see if we can't beat the Mantis Lords. And you know what I apparently did, friends? Apparently, I beat the Mantis Lords and then gave up on the game because the game was saved right after them. So I guess I, I had defeated them in my previous playthrough and then just stopped. Um... Also, I found out uh, in, in playing through the second half of the game after that point that there was actually a checkpoint right at the Mantis Lords. I just never found it. Uh, that would have helped. Uh, anyway, the second half of the game I like quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of cool environments. Um, the abilities you get in Hollow Knight are not the most exciting, um, but the combat feels really good. There's a lot of uh, like juggling either enemies in the air or getting above them and kind of bouncing above them to, to stay out of their reach. A lot of cool boss fights. The the dung the dung lord I think his name was I don't remember what his name was. He's he's one of those dung beetles. He was my favorite boss fight just because there's a, there's a song he, or his voice. He's just like humming to himself the whole time as you approach him, and it was great. Um, I finished it up. I liked it. Uh, it wasn't my favorite game of all time, but it felt good to finish it up. 
so yeah, that's Hollow Knight. Uh, it's definitely not as good as uh, Dark Souls going from the top of the list here. After that, we've got Uncited. I would put it below that. And then Astro's Playroom and then Inscription and Infernax. Uh, I think I actually liked Infernax a little better than Hollow Knight. Um, I think Hollow Knight is probably objectively a better game, but I liked Infernax better. Uh, and right below that is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I think I'm going to put Hollow Knight just below Castlevania Symphony of the Night, right above Hitman. Now it goes below Hitman. After that is Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah, that feels good. Hollow Knight goes above Bloodborne, below Hitman. Uh, next is Lumberjack. Lumberjack is a, a tiny game. It took me ages to get through because it just... There wasn't a lot of momentum in it. It's a, it's a kind of isometric action game where you play as a bear in the woods with an axe, and you're just breaking down all the human infrastructure that has intruded upon the woods and replacing it with cute woodsy things. Um, there's very little to this. It is, it is not really an action game because there's no enemies that you're dealing with. You just walk up to a thing and thwack it, and then when you've thwacked enough things, you get a bigger axe, and then you can thwack bigger things. And then you do that again, and then you finish the level, and you start over on the next level. It's very, very cute. Uh, it, it does what it does well, but there was not an action element that I was kind of hoping there would be, nor was there really much of a puzzle element, because there, there was a couple places where you had to do some problem solving, but mostly it was pretty straightforward. Um, it was cute. It just, it just, it just was was a little more focused on cute and less focused on uh, being a fun, exciting video game. Um, scrolling down the list, I see Trash Quest. Um, I see Mighty Gunvolt Burst. Metal Tail. Okay, it's definitely better than Metal Tail's Overkill. Then we've got Castlevania above that, and then Aztec: The Forgotten Gods, Mighty Gunvolt Burst, Trash Quest. It's kind of in that region, I would say. Um, I'm gonna put it above Castlevania. Um, because just for the cuteness alone, I think there's something to be had there in Lumberjack. Oh no, I just, what did I just do? I just, okay, so below Castlevania should be Metal Tails Overkill. I just accidentally moved it, so now I have to go put it back. Oh my gosh, the integrity of the list. There we go, okay. And then finally, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. I liked a lot. Um, I was expecting to be disappointed with Dark Souls 2 because I've heard it's kind of a black sheep of the family, but I actually really, really liked it. Um, I thought the uh, the way that the kind of hub-and-spoke world worked was pretty cool. Um, each level felt uh, distinct. There was some really cool areas. The lava area was really cool. The poison windmill area was a pain in the ass, but it was very cool. Um, and the only area I distinctly hated was the spot where there's a bunch of statues that spit poison at you. That was rough, but the boss fight at the end of it was just a big seething mass of bodies, and that was very, very cool. Uh, I like Dark Souls 2 a lot. Um, I, gosh, Dark Souls 2 versus Dark Souls 1. I like the interconnected world of Dark Souls 1 a little bit better. But Dark Souls 2, I think I enjoyed the experience of playing just a little bit more because I knew what I was doing. I knew how to play Dark Souls at that point. Am I going to give it to Dark Souls 2? Hmm. Thinking of the second half of the game. No, I'm going to give it to Dark Souls 1 because the, the later part of the game where you, like, you get this ring that lets you go to three places was annoying because it, it, it was just, like... It felt arbitrary that it was like, okay, now you got to go to these places. Like, I thought I was getting to the end of the game, and then suddenly it was like, oh, you got to go to these three other places first. And that was kind of a bummer. So so I'm going to put it at second place on the list. Right under Dark Souls is Dark Souls 2. That feels fitting. Uh, oh, what do we expect to talk about next month, friends? Well, uh, I'm very near the end of Pascal's Wager, which is kind of a Dark Souls-like game, so I'm sure we'll be talking about that. Um, I don't think there's any other games I'm playing that I'm, like, close to finishing. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I talk about next month. Uh, until, until then, goodbye. Hello, friends. Oh, it is, it is, it's not quite the middle of October, but it is well into October, and I never, I never ranked the games I beat in August yet. Oh, no! So we're going to play some catch-up here. Um, so, in August, I completed uh, Turrican, Dragon Ball Z Universe 2, and then in September, I completed Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. So just three games. Even, even though it was two months, I just have three games to add to the list. Uh, so the first is Turrican. Turrican is a uh, old uh, PC game, like old Amiga game, that is kind of a side-scrolly uh, shooter that has, like, big levels, kind of like mini Metroidvania levels. Um, 
it had some cool mechanics, but it didn't super thrill me. I played a little bit of Turkin too, and then Super Turkin. I actually like Super Turkin a lot more. Um, looking at the big list, I'm just kind of scrolling down it here. I'm getting to Blossom Tales. It's definitely below that. Below uh, Shovel Knight, Trash Quest. Okay, Mighty Gun Volt Burst, um, and then Lumberjack. Mm, yeah, I think it's it's probably I'm gonna put it right below Mighty Gun Volt Burst, which is right above Aztec the Forgotten Gods. I think that's where Turkin goes. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is interesting because Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 actually contains the entirety of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 in it. And uh, I picked this up a long time ago on the Switch and played a lot of both campaigns but never finished either one. Uh, but I've gotten real, real back into Dragon Ball lately, so I went and played through the campaign of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. And uh, it was great fun. That game has a ton of extra stuff in terms of like multiplayer raid battles and just all kinds of weird stuff, but I like it just as, like, kind of a evolution of the Tenkaichi games, I believe, are the ones on the, uh, the, like, GameCube Xbox era that had, like, 3D battle spaces. This kind of does the same thing, and it's just, it's just a Dragon Ball story. You know, there's time travel and big old alien threats to the universe and all kinds of fun stuff, and at the end, you and Goku team up, and it's just, it's really cute and fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, this is relatively high on the list. Um, looking down... Hollow Knight, Bloodborne, Grapple Dog. I like Xenoverse 2 more than... Here we go. Here's Tunic. A game that has nothing, no comparison whatsoever. Did I like it more than Tunic? Above that is Grapple Dog. Below Tunic is Tori 2. I want to put it above Grapple Dog and below Bloodborne. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is going to fit in. Uh, and then we've got Shantae the Pirate's Curse. Um, I love this game. Uh, Shantae the Pirate's Curse is definitely going high on the list. This I played on the 3DS. I, this is another one I started ages ago. And uh, Matt, DJ Stormageddon over on the Fun Games podcast, uh, has been playing through the Shantae games and seeing them talk about it made me decide I want to play it too. So thank you, Matt, for inspiring me uh, to go back to Shantae. I'm actually playing through uh, Half Genie Hero now, the next game in the series. Um, but yeah, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse was really great. I really loved the exploration in it. I really loved the dungeon design. This feels to me like what a remake of Zelda 2 should be. Um, so yeah, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse has a, a very high rating for me. Let's see. From the top of the list, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Unsighted, Astro's Playroom, Inscription, and then Infernax and Symphony of the Night. I definitely like this more than Symphony of the Night. I think I liked it a little more than Infernax. Mmm, Inscription. And then Astro's Playroom, and then Unsighted. I'm gonna I'm gonna pair it with Unsighted. I'm gonna put it uh, just below Unsighted. So Shantae the Pirate's Curse is now the number four game on my ranking, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, there's our update for today. Goodbye, friends. Hello, it's November. Let's talk about the games I played in October and see where they rank on the list. I just realized I put in the dates wrong on a bunch of these, so I'm fixing them real quick before we get started. October. Is that right? Oh, it is. Okay, and then this one also needs to be changed to October. And then this one also needs to be changed to October. All right, so in October, I beat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games pretty dang good um starting with Anomo anomutationum on october 3rd uh, i really liked this game this is one i only found out about because the uh the nindy nation uh uh youtube channel played it on their stream and i was immediately engrossed by the visuals because it's like uh mostly a 2d game you can explore 3d environments but you're you're still 2d characters and then when you go into battles, it, it becomes like a side scroll of beat 'em up. That actually reminded me a lot of like Game Boy Advance action platformers, kind of like another one we'll be talking about next month. Uh, but anyway, uh, very cool sci-fi story. Um, I played it very linearly. There was some uh, side quests and stuff, but I didn't really get into those too much. Um, I'm looking right away at like Infernax area, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I think I liked Animal Mutation more than symphony of the night below that is hitman hollow knight do i like it more than those below that's bloodborne dragon balls universe 2 i definitely liked it more than those hitman hollow knight castlevania it's somewhere around that area i think i liked it 
I'm going to put it just under Symphony of the Night. That feels like a good place for it. Uh, next on the list is Haiku the Robot, which is a, a very cool uh, Metroidvania game um, that has a super cool art style that kind of reminded me of playing a Game Boy Color game because each space was only made up of like four colors at a time. Um, but it was a really cool story about a, a robot exploring a world in kind of a post-post-apocalypse. Um, it had some really cool mechanics. It reminded me a lot of Hollow Knight, but I definitely liked it more than Hollow Knight. Um, I think I liked it more than Animutation. I liked it more than Symphony of the Night. Did I like it more than Infernax? I did Inscription. Inscription did really cool stuff. I'm going to put it just below Inscription, I think. Um, yeah, that, that, that feels right. Then Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. I liked a lot. I liked it more than the uh, Plague of Shadows uh, Shovel Knight uh, game, which uh, I beat back in January. Um, above that one is Blossom Tales, Ocean Heart, The Hand of Merlin, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, um, and then Webbed, Tori, Tunic. Um, I'm going to put it I'm going to put it right there, just below Tunic. All right, and then uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on the Game Boy Advance I played again. I just, I love that game. Uh, uh, I, it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Oh, wait, hang on. Nope, never mind. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 uh, on the Game Boy Advance is one of my favorite games of all time. It's just so easy to play. It's so simple. Um, I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to put it right above Astro's Playroom, right below Shantae the Pirate's Curse. I, I love Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on the Game Boy Advance. I don't like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on consoles that much. On consoles, I prefer Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. But the Game Boy Advance version of Pro Skater 2, mm, it's just, it's perfect. Uh, Monster Prom XXL, I played on October 14th, the same day I beat uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Um, this is a, uh, it, it's, I think it's an offshoot of the Jackbox games. Um, and, uh, it's real short. You're, you're intended to play it with a group, and and it's 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 a Jackbox game. You're supposed to play it over and over again. Um, I'm gonna play it with my wife at some point. I haven't yet, but it was fine. It was cute. Um, I'm gonna put it under Blossom Tales and above Plague of Shadows. Uh, I did a very bad job. I didn't get a date to the prom. Uh, then there's Betrayal at Club Low. This goes, uh, I'm, I'm going to start at looking near Infernax for it, but Betrayal at Club Low is a game where you play as a pizza delivery guy, and it's like an old computer RPG where you're walking around and clicking and talking to people, but when you battle them, you battle them with dice by battling like your music abilities against their, uh, their, their responsibility that's keeping them from dancing. Uh, it's weird, but it's really cool and really weird. The reason I say it's going around Inscription is because they're both freaking weird games, and I like freaking weird games. I liked Betrayal at Club Low a little bit less than Inscription, but it is only a little bit less. Uh, below that is Haiku the Robot. Now I'm going to drop it below Haiku the Robot. Then is Infernax and Symphony of the Night. I'm going to leave it there just below Haiku the Robot. And then finally is Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge is a Metroidvania that I think I allowed to get built up in my mind a little too much. It was fine, but I didn't think it was mind-blowing at, at all. Um, <sighs> did I like it more than Hollow Knight? No, I liked it less than Hollow Knight. Um, below Hollow Knight is Bloodborne. Yeah, I'm gonna put Axiom Verge uh, just under Bloodborne and above Dragon Ball Xenoverse? No, it's lower than that. Then we get down to Tunic. I like Tunic more. Spectre of Torment I liked more. No, I'm going to... Mm, mm. I want to put it just below Spectre of Torment. Just above Tori 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's there's our, our, our October update, friends. Oh, the list is getting pretty long. We've got 38 games on the list, starting with Dark Souls and going all the way down to Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Uh, tune in next month. Hey, whoa, 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 friends. It's time for the last segment of my Game of the Year podcast. Uh, I've got games I beat in uh, November and December to add to the list. Uh, the first one is Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, which I beat on November 2nd. This is a pretty fun side-scrolling beat-em-up uh, Dragon Ball game that goes through, well, most of the plot of Dragon Ball. Um, it weirdly ends just before, um, it's the, like, the, the, the final Piccolo Jr. saga. Um, 2D side-scrolling action, uh, d some, some boss fights that are, like, fighting games. Um, I'm going down the list here. I've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is definitely going to fall below that. 
just kind of scrolling down. Symphony of the Night, Anno Mutationum, Hitman Hollow Knight, Bloodborne, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Did I, I think I like this more than Xenoverse 2. Probably right, but yeah, I'm going to put it there, between Bloodborne and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Uh, next on the list is 100 Fires the Rising of Red Star. This is a real dumb game. It's real short. It's it's like a Metal Gear Solid parody that was really funny in its absurdity, but like I could never tell if it was meaning to be funny or not. I'm starting from the bottom of the list and going up for this one. I'm getting up to uh, Metal Tales Overkill. I like this more than that. Castlevania... And then Lumberjack. This definitely goes under Lumberjack. I'm going to put it just under Castlevania, uh, just above Metal Tales Overkill. 100 Fires the Rising of Red Star is freaking weird. Um, but if you really like Metal Gear Solid and want to play, like, an absurdist take of that game, then it's a thing. Uh, Papers, Please. I've heard about this game for so many years, and I tried it out, and I didn't like it. Um, I lost on, like, day eight or something and just left it there. Um, I didn't like Papers, Please at all. Um, because it was that I, 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 I didn't like the storytelling that was happening. I could tell there was an interesting story to be found, but I, I wasn't thrilled by the way it was coming across. Uh, the gameplay I didn't like, I was playing it on a Vita and it, it uses the touchscreen and I get that like part of the goal of that game is to be kind of cumbersome, but it just didn't do it for me. Uh, Star Fox is at the bottom of the list. I like this more than Star Fox. Then we've got Headland, Gem Wizard's Tactics, Metal Tales Overkill. I'm going to put it uh, just below Gem Wizard's Tactics. Um, I, list, I, I played it because the Play Along podcast was playing it, uh, and I'm glad I listened to their episodes about it and kind of learned what the story was, but Papers, Please just was not for me. Uh, next is God of War 2018. I finally finished this game uh, by switching it to the easy mode and just kind of cruising through it. Um, I like the story a lot. The combat is fun, but anytime the combat got difficult, I got frustrated. Once I switched down to easy mode, I liked it a lot more. This definitely goes somewhere near the top of the list. Um, I'm scrolling down a little bit. We've got Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Unsighted, Shantae, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Uh, Shantae the Pirate's Curse, yeah. I'm going to put this under Unsighted. Uh, so the top of my list now is Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Unsighted, and God of War. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, I beat on December 1st. This is the Game Boy Advance version of Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, I like this one. I didn't like it as much as the GameCube version of Ultimate Spider-Man, which is, like, routinely one of my top games. Um, but it was fun. Uh, it's going to go below Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Um, just scrolling down here, we get to Symphony of the Night. We get to Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, Ultimate Spider-Man. Hmm, I liked it a little bit less than Advanced Adventure. I liked it less than Grapple Dog. Uh, then Tunic, Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. Yeah, I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put it just under Tunic. Next up is Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku, another Game Boy Advance Dragon Ball Z game. Uh, I like this one more than I liked... It. No, I liked it less than Advanced Adventure, because the problem with Legacy of Goku is it's it's kind of like a Zelda-type adventure, except for the combat is terrible and there's not really any puzzles. What am I talking about? I like this one. I don't, this game was bad. Uh, it goes below Ultimate Spider-Man for sure. Um, I, in fact, had to play a modified version of this game in order to even make progress in it, because it's just not... It's not a good game. I'm scrolling down here. We're passing Plague of Shadows, Trash Quest, Turrican. Um, yeah, probably somewhere around Turrican. Uh, I liked it a little more than Turrican, Mighty Gunvolt Burst. I'm going to put it just under Trash Quest, just above Mighty Gunvolt Burst. Um, Legacy of Goku. Not a great game. Um, yeah. Uh, next is Beanie. This is kind of, it kind of looks like a Donkey Kong Country game, but it's a game where you just, you're just you just climbing up a tree, and it's real cute. It's from the developer of Tori and Tori 2 and Kiwi 64. Uh, Super Kiwi 64 is actually going to be the next game we talk about. Uh, I like this less than Tori 2. I'm going down past that. Um, I'm going to put it above Monster Prom XXL and below Blossom Tales. Beanie's just kind of a nothing game. It's very, very short. It's really just kind of a prelude to Super Kiwi 64, which I really liked. Um, I'm going to start at uh, Tori 2 and then go up a little bit from there. Axiom Verge, Spectre of Torment, and then Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm going to put this above Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm going to put it just above Tunic and just below Grapple Dog. Super Kiwi 64 is kind of a Banjo-Kazooie-like, but very, very simplified, but very cute and very fun. Uh, it's very short, uh, as all that developer's games are, but well worth your time. Next is Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Uh, this is the Switch version of the game, which is the remaster of the Wii version of the game. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this one. Uh, it's just dumb, dumb action. Uh, I'm put it... Uh, did I like it more than Bloodborne? 
Did I like it more than Hollow Knight? I didn't like it more than Hollow Knight. I th- think I liked it a little more than Bloodborne. Because it, it was just dumb, stupid, fun action. What's not to like? Then Blue Fire. Uh, Blue Fire I finished on December 28th. Uh, you'll be hearing more about this one from me in an upcoming podcast sometime soon. Uh, but Blue Fire, I really liked. It's kind of a Zelda-like game. Uh, except if you took the puzzle solving in Zelda and replaced it with platforming challenges. It's fantastic. It, it has a great art style. The controls feel wonderful. It's got great mobility. Like, you unlock different uh, ways to get around the world as you progress. Blue Fire is really good. Um, Dark Souls is at the top of the list. I think it goes under Dark Souls. Then there's Dark Souls 2. I'm going to put it in my second slot. A bl- Blue Fire in my second slot. Uh, nearly topping the list. Uh, Primal Light is kind of a Super Nintendo era throwback uh, action platformer that I've liked less as time has gone on. I'm, I'm actually played in a, another game right now that's kind of similar, uh, but better. Um, it's, it's just kind of one of those. Um, I'm going to put it uh, just below Plague of Shadows. Um, if you're looking for an old school platform action game, it's not bad, but it doesn't do a lot. Uh, finally, is Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper, I did not really have much of an eye on. I heard good things about it when it came out, but it didn't sound like a game for me. I finally decided to try it out, and uh, I, I actually had a review key sitting around for it, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to play this game. I'll put it on my Switch. I freaking loved it. It took me a little while to get into it. It kind of started and stopped a few times, but then something just clicked, and I like could not play anything else. Um, it has a really really cool story you really feel like the choices you make have an impact on the story the gameplay aspect of it i mean there's not a lot of gameplay but the the way that the decision making is gamified is really really interesting i love citizen sleeper Uh, is it the top of my list is citizen sleeper my number one game of 2022 I think it is. Congratulations, Citizen Sleeper. So, friends, that's it. My 2022 finished games list. Uh, I completed... uh, Well, according to this, I completed exactly 50 games. That's pretty pretty fun. Uh, My list that I have here is Citizen Sleeper, Dark Souls, Blue Fire, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, Unsighted, God of War 2018, Shantae the Pirate's Curse, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on the Game Boy Advance, Astro's Playroom, Inscription, Haiku the Robot, Betrayal at Club Blow, Infernax, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Animal Mutationum, Hitman, Hollow Knight, Star Wars The Force Unleashed on the Switch, Bloodborne, Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Grapple Dog, Super Kiwi 64, Tunic, Ultimate Spider-Man on the Game Boy Advance, Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment, Axiom Verge, Tori 2, Webbed, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, The Hand of Merlin, I don't know why I'm reading this list, Ocean's Heart, Blossom Tales, Beanie, Monster Prom XXL, Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows, Primal Light, Trash Quest, Dragon Ball Z, Legacy of Goku, Mighty Gunvolt Burst, Turrican, Aztec, The Forgotten Gods, Lumberjack, oh my god, we're almost there, Castlevania, 100 Fires the Rising of Red Star, Metal Tales, Over Killed Gem Wizards Tactics Papers Please Headland and at the bottom of the list is Star Fox on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Thank you for listening, friends. Uh, I've got things all over the internet. You can find me at turtlepower.com. I write at geek2geekmedia.com. I host the Power Playthroughs podcast. I'm a co-host of Too Young for This Trek and and more. Until next time, friends. Tap and hope for the best. The Power Playthroughs Podcast is part of the We Can Make This Work Probably Podcast Network and geek to geek Media. Visit troidalpower.com to find more of my nonsense, links to both networks, and a Patreon where you can support the show.